So it's been uh, what, like 12 years since well, the. It was essentially midnight, December 21st, 2008. Right. And if it, if it had happened at any other day or time, we would have had a body count. You know, it was like. If it happened in the, in the summertime, that would have been hundreds, if not thousands, killed. Right. You know, anytime during the day. Yeah, of course, TPA blamed it on cold weather, all kinds of stuff, and then they wound up saying it was not our fault because there was an uh, undetected layer of slime that caused the problem, which, that's not true. TPA put that layer of slime there right. back when they were first doing the stuff. So, right. Anyway, uh, truth has been pretty well battered. Uh, in this whole thing and, and pretty much makes me not trust anything that, that TVA says without corroboration. Right. You know, I know a number of things that, that they stated publicly that were just flat out lies. Um, the biggest one that everybody's realizing now is it's not just dirt. <laughs> right. Um, it's a problem. And there was a bunch of illegal stuff in that landfill. There was things that, of course, the public version is we looked for it and couldn't find it. Well, the reason they couldn't, um, they had so much trouble with the dredgers getting everything up, because those things are like a big old, you know, flexible pipe with an auger bit on the end of it. Right. The reason they had so much trouble getting it is because there were barrels and there was equipment. There was heavy equipment thrown in that landfill. Right. You know, they used it to dump everything in the world. That didn't get corroborated because they have a, an amazing uh, ability to say, okay, that heavy piece of heavy equipment's right over there. They would look over there and say, no, we don't see it. And, you know, that, that sounds like something you would make up. All right. But I can tell you right now that if you look at the TVA report, we had a flood on May 4th. 2009 and um, the Emory, Emory River flooded uh, it was a, a huge mess because that stuff was just sitting there they didn't do anything to channelize the river ahead of time you know the priorities were all messed up with you know the the CAG the citizens advisory group saying telling them look you have to deal with this because you're going to have a flood and it's going to push all that stuff you know, wherever, uh, and uh, they didn't, and it did. Yeah. It was a huge mess, so they had a tremendous mess. Uh, but he said, I couldn't, I couldn't get a sample because there were snakes. But you know, a Tennessee Wildlife Resources Agency officer. Word about snakes? Is afraid of snakes. That's then, something. That's something else well, right there. Here's the thing. They didn't report that they didn't sample. TVA said they couldn't sample because the conditions were dangerous. And I said, I will go get the sample for you. They said, no, you're not qualified. I said, I'm qualified to dip any container you got in the water. All right. You know, and you can video me while we do it. Well, they refused. And uh, so they had a, a monitoring program that they claimed was giving them accurate monitoring of what the uh, water quality was. Well, when they reported it, those three days, four days, where we had the flood event, are not in the data. There's no data there. Yeah. And in the sample that I got, we estimated that about a half a percent of the water, we just dipped it in the surface of the water, half a percent of it turned out to be coal ash sediment which meant that the river was moving about 30 dump trucks of coal ash a minute down, down the river. All right. Which, There's their coal train right there. Yep. Well, that was the lake. What you see right there is the site of the... Spill, the famous spill. Uh 
right here? Yeah. yeah that That's where the containment area yeah. was? Yeah. Yeah. And now they just covered it up with grass? Well, they have more than that. I mean, it's got, um, you know, I'm an engineer should stop me if I get too, too technical. Are they pulling methane out of there or something? What are those? Water, yeah. It looks like methane pumps. There's a wild turkey. Yeah, turkey that turkey gobble about that. Those are uh, sampling wells. Okay. Uh, they're monitoring wells. And they're supposed to be monitoring any flow of uh, groundwater. Which the statement was it's not gonna not gonna radiate out if water all flows downhill, uh, etc. Cetera, et cetera. Which turns out to not be remotely true. Uh, due to capillary action and any number of uh, hydrologies. But uh, this causeway was blown out when it was originally done. The ash went all back up in there. Mm -hmm. One of the biggest physical uh, causes of damage to the houses along the lake was the water tsunami from the collapse into the into the lake it sent a wave um, across the lake that was eight feet high or so it destroyed boat houses and docks and everything been rebuilt now still got pictures of those, those things that it, it was just amazing the devastation of stuff. So did, did you did anybody witness that no. There was nobody out here, was it? Well, it was, it was like Christmas. I said, it was midnight. Oh, right. So, so nobody even saw it. 24th, 25th. So there certainly wasn't any. 21st. So there wasn't any video of it or anything. So it was the winter solstice, essentially. Wasn't it? Mm -hmm. I, I, I get confused. I've, yeah, I I've think that's right. More than once. Since then. That's about right. But um, the you know the ash birds were the size of that island out there. You mm -hmm. remember that? Right. And. There were hundreds of them. You know, the um, ash was piled 80 feet above the level of the lake, which is an eight-story building. And when that collapsed, those things traveled. Um, we had ash deposits as much as 15 miles downstream and eight miles upstream, which right. nobody would have told you that it traveled upstream, but it did. It did, yeah. Of course, they weren't, they said they weren't up there because they weren't sampling, but then people sampled and said, well, yeah, they're fine. they found deposits eight, 10 feet thick hmm. of ash that came out of this thing. Limited. And uh, so I've got a piece of property that you can see the very edge of, of uh, you can't quite see my property because it's around the corner up there, but when you see where the water disappears up there, mm -hmm. the main channel is, is still, uh, the Emory River is up there. We have uh, two pieces of property, two lots. Um, before the, before the uh, ash spill, those were on the market. They were listed, at, you know, in the neighborhood of a hundred grand each. Right. Because they were... You know, good clear water Emory River lots in a subdivision. They had all kinds of, of amenities to it. And we were getting uh, three to five showings a week. And uh, we've had, haven't been able to sell it. So that's 13 years. Still hadn't been able to sell it. Yeah. Well, what are people saying about the fishing out here? Is this thing got fish in it? Fishing is really good. Is it? Yeah, it's really good. Came um, back. It came back, huh? It did. Uh, it came back really quick. Um, for the first two years, it was pretty dead. It really was. And then, you know, everything built back up. When you have an impact on an area like this, that's at, at the bottom, I mean, as big as this disaster was, there was a lot of water around it that wasn't impacted. You know, this water drains all the way up onto Sunbright and up in Morgan County and, mm -hmm. uh, you know, I can't, I can't remember right offhand the size of the Emory River watershed, but the Emory Obed watershed is a, you know, it's a wild scenic river. 
and beautiful clear water and you know mother nature will take care of things if you quit messing her up right so they came back in i mean for two years it was scary how long did it take them to dig all the shit out of the river they still don't have it all dug out well i mean they got half of it and said okay we're finished you know they hauled all that all down to alabama to that perry county they did. landfill yeah they did and, and a good bit of it's back here. yeah and they covered some of it up there yeah and then what you're seeing we had asked for um to not give us the high criminal forehead reminder mm -hmm. and they originally said they would do that and then they rebuilt that so that it can't be vegetated they, they uh, decided to build it as a safe dams act which you know they'll never have the problem again just because they train it right the, the reason they had the problem in the first place is one they piled it too high second of all they let their drain system clog up and it just built up pressure behind the dam blew it out simple as that wow simple as that hmm. of course it took them you know a quarter million dollars in engineering study to tell them that's what happened right. which everybody knew what happened well, I think I just, I reported, uh, looked up the figures. I think it was, what, what was the total end up final cost of the thing? A billion dollars? 1.4. 1.4 billion dollars. Yeah. And there's, there's a bigger cost on top of that because the city of Kingston land values were depressed around 600 million, 640 million is what uh, was testified to in court. Right. In the lawsuit. So the land, the property values went down. 640 million and stayed depressed and are just now starting to eat back up. Right. You know, uh, there's a national, uh, with climate change and, and disasters uh, occurring out west, we're seeing a lot of people want to move and Tennessee has cheap land compared to California. So right. we're seeing a lot of people from California discover how wonderful it is to be here. And, and it right. is. This is still. I've been all around the world several times, and I still love this place more than I do anything else. Right. Yeah. Well, a lot of people are moving out of New York City and Boston and the, the cities on the East Coast, too, because of COVID and everything. So, they, they finally agreed to rebuild these islands. They, they wouldn't commit to that. Right. Um, and I don't quite understand what their um, restoration process is. Those islands got blown out and obliterated. Right. Uh, and they had good stands, river birch and mm -hmm. willows. Um, now there's no trees really. There's trying to little some young trees, but yeah. And, and I don't know what they're planning to do. Are they just going to leave it alone and see what they back, or you know, did, do they actually have a plan? Right. You know, and the plans tend to be bureaucratic. As far as environmentally recovering, environmentally, we're, we're better than we have been in half a century. Yeah. You know, since the mid-50s when they built this place. It's, uh, uh, yes, yeah, the nature of the beast. It's, uh, we've had 13 years of, of um, water flowing over it, and they did get a lot out. Uh, they, they got about half of it, and... You know, I wonder what's going on uh, further downstream because, you know, of course there's stuff here. It's still residual. Uh, you never, and all of it never flows out. But uh, wintertime, we have white pelicans that show up here. We have all of our native birds. We have um, black crowned night herons, which I think is one of the most beautiful birds on the lake. Uh, they're still nesting here and thriving. You said you had eagles? Yeah. Bald eagle place. population is coming back all over. And I was thinking, no it's not. Because before the ash spill, it was a white sand beach island. Now it's a gray sand years, they paid us basically our carrying costs for three years. So, in other words, we, t Tennessee compensated us for three years of interest in our property but it took us five years to get it. Hmm. So, and real estate was selling like crazy in this area up until that. So the, the economic, you know, as far as environmentally, you know, we're upstream, you know, mm -hmm. it's pushed down. I mean, this thing, this thing flows 
uh, four weeks ago, it was flowing uh, around 80,000 cubic feet per second, and, which is... And what, yeah, what's, what, what river is that right there? The Emory. Emory, okay. Yeah, which is the Grand Canyon, Colorado through the Grand Canyon typically flows 10, 12,000 to 20,000. So it was four times bigger than the, than the Colorado, which everybody thinks is a big river. Right. You know, but, and that is dam controlled. It won't, Colorado won't flow that big if they don't release the water. All right. But anyway, it's, it's pretty heavy flow. You know, it moves, it, it'll move stuff on down. Um, if you want to catch uh, an 80 pound catfish, Watts Bar Lake is a place to come. You want to catch a, a seven, eight pound largemouth bass, this is a place to come. You want to catch a ton of crappie or any other fish, we have got them. Okay. You know, it's just a uh, small mouth, everything you can think of is, is in here and doing well. All right. What we don't have is the economic boom that we had because we still have that disaster stink on us and it's been reignited by these guys who were our adversaries at the time i mean these guys on the cleanup crews you know they were they were not friends of the locals they were definitely brainwashed into being everything we're saying's wrong and it's blah 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 well now they're dying mm -hmm. you know and uh, I, I i hate that for them I hate that for them because they didn't make enough money, and TVA will not own up to anything it does. All right.